Hello, I am going to show you how to install Blitzmax from the source code located at the uh, GitHub repository, github.com slash blitzresearch slash blitzmax. Now first I'm going to show you how to install MinGW to work with the uh, open source Blitzmax. Uh, you can skip ahead if you already have MinGW installed. But for those who don't, if you go to the near the bottom of the uh, repository page, you'll see a link. And it's tdm-gcc.tdragon.net slash download. Just go there. You have an option of a 32-bit or 64-bit. Now, naturally, if you have a 32-bit version of Windows, you need the 32-bit version. If you have a 64-bit version of Windows, either one will work. Now, I've downloaded the 64-bit uh, version because I have a 64-bit uh, Windows 10 install. Just need to install it. So, go to your uh, downloads. And look for your um. Here we go. Uh, here it is. This is the uh, 64 bit version. Just double click on it and say yes. And you want to do create. And here it's giving me the option. You won't have this option if you download the 32 bit version. But we're just going to leave it there. Pretty much everything will be in defaults. Now, this is a little important. You might want to read it. Um, it has to do with uh, running threads and the library they use. Just It's just an um, attribution clause that requires you to put their licensing bundle in with your programs they distribute. Um, just read through that, try to understand it. And here you're going to choose directory. You might want to write this down. Um, it'll play important later on in the installation. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at default. You can change that if you want. I just advise do not put it in program files or program files x86 because it will need write access to those files and it will not get the required access due to user access control from Windows Vista on up. So default is perfectly fine for most people, so just choose that. Then you want to choose a mirror, um, get the one that's closest to where you live. I'm going to do New York. And just leave everything here default and install. And this will take a minute or so. In the meantime, we'll listen to some music. Okay, that's enough music. Um, now you just click next and finish and read the README file if you wish. Now, after we install MinGW, we need to make sure it's configured properly to work with Blitzmax. You need to open up the uh, system property dialog. Uh, there's a shortcut to that, and that is press the Windows key and pause, and that will open up the system dialog. 
come down here to advanced system settings click on that and then go to environment variables first thing we want to do is uh, check the path and make sure that MidGW got installed correctly now I'm using Windows 10 and the path is put into a list if you have an earlier version of Windows you're going to end up with a line with all these in it separated by semicolons what you want to see is you want to look for your install followed by bin and if it's there you're good to go if not on Windows 10 just click new and add it just type it on in the Here we go. And be sure to end it with bin. Okay. We actually don't want that. <laughs> That's just an example. So I'm going to uh, delete it. Or if you have the long line and you don't see this in it, put a semicolon and add it. It's that simple. But if you're using the TDM GCC, it should automatically be there. Another thing you want to do is check all these others and see if maybe there's another version of GCC installed onto the system. Um, if it is, it may cause conflicts. So get rid of it. Just delete it out of there. Um, and just let whatever installed it use the latest version. Um, you might want to write down the path first before you delete it, just in case there's a compatibility problem. Uh, some older programs require an older version of MinGW. Um, so you might want to write it down, so in case you have to put it back in, it's up to you. But we got this here. Next thing we need to do is create an environment variable. Just click on new and type in in gw for the variable name and for the value remember I told you to write down where you're installing it you're just going to put that in here and click OK. And notice that you have bin here, but on here you leave off the bin. So it's just where you installed the file. That's all you need to do. Once that's done, your environment variables are set. You want to Next, go and install Blitzmax. Uh, actually, the Blitzmax source. So we're going to go back to the uh, GitHub.com. Blitz research slash Blitzmax. And you're going to come over here where it says clone or download. Click on that and then click on download zip. What it's going to do is it's going to put everything here into a zip file and download it so go to your downloads folder that I have you probably note that I have several versions of Blitmax here but the one I want is the uh, Blitzmax master that I just downloaded so open it up and extract it. Now um, there are different places you can extract it. You can extract it into the root folder of your system drive, which is the recommended place. So it'd be C, just C colon slash, or you can put it into your home directory. Um, for this example, I'm going to put it in my home directory because I have about. 20 different versions of Blitzmax already installed 
and it'll just make it easier. I don't have any in my home directory. Um, it'd be C users and your uh, name. The, it's really simple. Um, and you're just going to extract it here. And this will just take a few seconds. I mean, meaning time five seconds, three, two, one, zero, and we are done. That quick. Now we go back. Now, if you notice, go to my home directory. Now, if you notice, it extracts it as Blitzmax Master. That's okay. I would like to rename it just plain Blitzmax. Or you put it Blitzmax OS for open source, or however you want to name it. Just uh, or you can leave it Blitzmax dash Master if you like. Really makes no difference. Now, what you're going to do is, you're going to open that up, you're going to see underscore SRC. Now, there's an SRC without the underscore. If you want the one with the underscore, go into that. You're going to look for Win32 underscore x86. Do not open that folder. Instead, hold the shift key while you right click on the folder name and go to open command window here and now you're at a command window already in the proper folder you do a dir which is short for directory to get a directory listing and it should look something like this um, next thing you want to do is verify your gcc is installed correctly just do gcc space dash V hit enter and you should see a bunch of stuff printed with GCC version 5.1.0 or whatever version you happen to have installed if you did not install the recommended version and it seems everything is ready to go so now we just need to install and compile Blitzmax, and this is how you do it. Real simple, type install, hit enter, and away you go. Now this is going to take a few minutes. I will pause this video so that you do not have to watch me compile. And I'll see you when it's done. Now, once you're done with that, assuming there have been no errors in the building, you should have a working Blitzmax installation. Uh, just click on Max IDE, and it's going to ask to rebuild the documentation. Click OK. Wait a couple minutes. I wouldn't even take that long. Maybe about a half a minute. And you have a working Blitzmax installation. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, stretch this out a bit. And compile and see if that works. There we go, and it works. Now we're ready to go on to the next step, compiling third-party mods. Thank you for watching. See you in part two.